Master Low. It'll be grand. It'll be grand. We're back for another one. Owen and Dan is here. And by Jesus, I'd say we have a... I, I've said this quite often before, and maybe I've been wrong a bunch of times, but I, I'll tell you what. Today's episode is going to be special. It's going to be a real good one. Uh, I'm here. Dan is here. How are you, Dan? I'm okay. Um, I've had a few days to digest our movie. Um, <laughs> Yeah. You? Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll, yeah. we'll 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 get to that. We'll get to our our Yeah. Hey, Owen, I want to talk about the Oscar nominations. What do you mean you want to talk about the Oscar <laughs> nominations? Did you even know they were happening today until I told yes. you? Yes, I did ago? because I saw someone going, I think these might be the Oscar nominations on Facebook, and that's pretty much the only <laughs> Yeah. So the Oscars, the Oscars were not the Oscar nominations for 2022 for the ceremony that's uh, I think it's in 2 weeks time. No, a uh, week's time. Yeah. I don't know. It's in. It's it's this month. <coughs> um, were announced today as we are recording this. They were fi- the uh, and the nominees were finalized about an hour ago. So we're gonna go through some of them. Um, forgive me if I miss anything because, as I said, this has just happened. But don't worry, don't worry. I'll remember any once you miss. You, you know? Yeah, if, uh, correct me on any mistakes I make here, Dan, as well, please, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, where do you want to start? What do we want to look at first? What's your favorite Oscar? Um, I always like the effects. Fuck, I'd find that now. Hang on, <laughs> give me a second. Give me a second. <laughs> you, I bet you're moving <laughs> best motion picture Shit. or something. Or... No, no, no. It's just I'm scrolling through the big thing here, and I have to just find it. Okay, all right, relax. <laughs> we will get there. Maybe I should just, uh, you know, type it into Google or something. Do you want to do makeup and hairstyling? How about that one? <laughs> yeah, that's the same thing. Visual effects. I found it. Here we go. Okay. The uh, five nominees this year for best visual effects. No Time to Die. The James Bond James movie Bond, that yes. I will uh, never watch, probably ever. I'll probably end up watching it because I hear there's something that happens in the end that I'm, like, intrigued by. Does James Bond die? I can't say in case people still want to watch the movie. Whisper it to me. Yes! Oh, fucking... Cl- Maybe I'll watch it now. Um, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it was some... Yeah, yeah. it's a Marvel movie, so it's always kind of like, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Free Guy, another movie I'll never watch. I watched that. Um, atrocious, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it looked it. Um, that anyway, Oscar nominated free guy. That's like the year Suicide Squad got nominated for like best makeup or something or best costume, wasn't it? And they just yeah. stuck. They just stuck Oscar nominee, <laughs> Academy Award nominated Suicide Squad. They put it on all yeah. the that free guy will probably do that now for the like the Blu-rays and stuff. And to be fair, probably the best part about the movie was the costuming. Like was costumes are good. A Suicide Squad. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were to be fair. Um, and then the big two in this category, Dan, Spider-Man, No Way Home, yeah. and Dune. Oh, it's Dune, like. It's Dune. I d- yeah. Well, now, yeah, you think... <laughs> I love so you, Spider-Man, No Way Home. I love it. Don't get me wrong. But it's Dune, like. It's but, but this is Dune. specifically, you think the, vi- the effects in Dune are better oh, than the yeah. effects in Spider-Man. I, mean, I, I yeah. can't even really think of anything in Spider-Man that, oh, that looked good. It, it looked fine. I mean, some of the de-aging was like, done pretty well. Everything else really didn't. Excuse you. Like it looked like all the other Marvel movies. They're all they all have that s- same yeah, same. Yeah, a little bit different for the most part. I always find the Spider-Man ones have a little bit of a different feel to it visually. Just a little bit. There's a bit of a different I, signature to it. I think Spider-Man No Way Home might have taken this nomination probably almost entirely on the mirror verse scene with the trains and shit, where he's fighting Doctor Strange. Um. Because that was, I hope huge. not. And that would that looked exactly like it always has. Anytime anybody yeah. else went there and like Ant Man and all that kind of shit. Anyway, those are visual effects. Let's get through some of the actual ones, like the big ones. <laughs> not, not to, I'm not trying to shoot in visual effects. They're great people. We love them very much. <laughs> Honestly, maybe the people that work the most. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pro- yeah. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything interesting? That came up this year. In, in can- is it Encanto or Enchanto? Encan- it's Encanto. Encanto. Encanto got yeah. a nominees for um, like best soundtrack and original song and yeah, stuff. Yeah, um, it has a really good soundtrack to be fair. Yeah, and I think looking at it, they it got like three nominations for three different songs. 
or at least two, yeah. but they were like not the same award. So it got like best soundtrack, and uh, the award for yeah. that was, I think, just generally. And then the the original song they picked was uh, "Dos Orguitas." Forgive my Spanish, yeah. which is not a song that I I haven't seen in Canto. Um, but the songs that I think are like big in the charts right now is is "Don't Talk About Bruno" or something. Yeah, is that the big one that didn't get nominated anyway? And it's like number one in America right now. Yeah. Hmm. Animated feature film. Now this one I hate. I this okay. I saw these nominees and I just was like, ugh, right? Because every year there's a nailed on, right? If Disney or Pixar release a movie in the year, it gets nominated yeah. for best animated feature and it always wins. Yeah. This year, the nominees, right, are Flea, which is I had never heard of until these nominees were uh, announced and it looks really interesting because it's been nominated for best animated feature film and also best documentary feature film interesting which surely to me i i'm i must look it up after this but that has to be a rarity in in awards right that it's a documentary and animated feature film yeah surely um it sounds like it would be um and then the mitchells versus the machines was nominated uh netflix's um well, it's Phil Lord and Miller, um, who did the Lego movie and stuff. Their thing for Netflix about a family fighting robots, which a lot of people loved when it came out. I thought it was fine. Um, didn't blow me away or anything, but, you know, cool. And then the other three nominees <laughs> are Disney Pixar. <laughs> There's Luca, Raya and the Last Dragon, and Encanto. So one of I them is going to win. <laughs> yeah, I mean, out of those three, I think maybe Raya... Um, Raya is the only one of those three that I've seen, and I I was actually I've seen all of them. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by Raya and the Last Dragon. To be quite honest, I actually quite liked it. Well, I went to see it when it came out, and it, it got me a little bit. I got a little it, bit emotional. It again. gave it, it gave the Avatar vibes. Let's be fair. Yeah, it did. Yeah, but it, I liked it against my own will as well because I Which wasn't is, really you know, I wasn't really interested yeah. in it when it like you know the trailers didn't do a whole lot for me. And I'm the interesting not, thing is you liked the second trailer. But I didn't liked, like the first one. I liked this. Yeah, the first trailer was all like fucking schlocky. Made it look like a straight up just a comedy thing. It was all jokes and everything. And the second one yeah. was a lot more like dragons and fantasy and mystery and stuff. Um, and yeah. I, I, I just I I'm kind not of adopts away. Of, yeah, I'm not a fan <laughs> of uh, Aquafina either. I don't particularly yeah. enjoy her, but she, I think the movie won me over. It's pretty good. But yeah, and Encanto and Luca are the other two. Um, so. I I really enjoy Encanto. It's not like a big fucking in your face movie but it's a really nice story it's gorgeous some of the animations is just stunning it, i i really enjoyed it it, it personally connects with me for on a few notes so mm-hmm. it's a good movie yeah um yeah so i, I see them colombian as well because i mean frankly it sounds terrible i don't know anything about colombia really you know mm-hmm. no well <laughs> not not good things <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> depends who you ask. We've all seen <laughs> narcos, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's not play the. Oh, that's what Colombia is about. And that's the, what Colombia is. The amount of times that people talk about arms, oh, listen, drink. No, and listen. That's, that's, that's what, all that's we what are. Colombia is. And as John Carter taught us, Mexican people are <laughs> four armed giant green alien people. Okay, <laughs> that's all that okay. matters in the world. The okay, so let's go on. Uh, let's do like, supporting acting nominations. Okay, so best supporting actress, which um, was one of the first awards that they announced the nominees for today. I think they led with best supporting actress, and the nominees are Judy Dench for Belfast. I'm I please I apologize in advance and in advance advance for if I pronounce anybody's name wrong. Okay, I'm reading somebody's for the first time. Um. So f- please forgive me. Aun uh, Hanue Ellis. I've definitely said that wrong. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, Kirsten Dunst for The Power of the Dog. Ariana DeBose for West Side Story. And uh, Ireland's own Jesse Buckley for The Lost Daughter. Let's fucking go. Ireland's in the Oscars once again. Killarney woman Jesse Buckley. Let's fucking go. My money's on her. Well, my money's not Local on her, but I, w- woman. I would like her to win. <laughs> Local woman wins Oscar. <laughs> All right, that's what's happening today. Jesse Buckley. Uh, yeah, so I haven't... No, well, that's a lie. I have seen The Power of the Dog. Um, thought it was... Sorry. Yeah. It's very slow. 
Um, not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but it is very slow. And it's uh, it has Oscars written all over it, to be quite honest. And it got a shitload of awards, or not awards, nominees, nominations this year. And it's I feel like it might sweep the Oscars this year. Well, I haven't watched any of those movies, but I probably should. Uh, well, I go. I'm gonna go see Belfast. Um, I actually meant to go last week, and What's I didn't get about? a chance to. Bel- so Belfast is uh, Kenneth Branagh directed, um, and it's about a uh, Protestant family living in Belfast at the outbreak of the Troubles. Yeah. Um, and it's it's kind of the story f- of, I suppose, their side of thing. It's them um, trying to live with the war and everything yeah. going on in Belfast, and like wasn't a great time. To, for most people, was not a good. No, was probably two thumbs down all round. I think for the troubles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not popular that one. No, not, <laughs> not really. No, not a big hit, really. Yeah. Um, Do you think it's weird? Like, because in the Republic, like, like the troubles are a thing you kind of just learn about now, but it's not a thing you really think about often. Like, it's not a big deal. Like, sort of happens in the north. Like, gets like ignored mostly now in the south. Yeah, I think it's fair to say. No, yeah, they do. That's kind of yeah. shit. No, it is. It's yeah. it's, it's it's terrible, and uh, and it is. Yeah. It's, um, it's and I'm, I'm putting myself down there as well. By the way, I'm not saying yeah. like I'm unique to this. No, it's a thing that for the majority of people living in the south of Ireland, um, or in the free state, uh, that it, it's just a thing that they've they read about, and it's kind of ah, it's over. The, the troubles ended yeah. in, in 1991 or whatever when the Good Friday Agreement. Yeah. And fucking um, Bill Clinton and <laughs> Bertie yeah. Ahern came along <laughs> and went, it's over now. Um, you know what annoys me? But it's me? still a lived it's, experience for yeah. a lot of people in the north. So, what annoys me are a lot of the like free staters. <laughs> I know the lingo. <laughs> a lot of the fr- um people from the republic and it's usually people younger but see, older people as well who are like oh, ooh, oh, up the rah and all this kind of stuff and like they almost play it as a meme and I'm just like whether you agree with what happened Northern Ireland or not don't play it off as a joke just because you're Irish and it's like haha this is a funny thing to say like take it serious you know mm-hmm. yeah but yeah. look, uh, let's not get too... Let's keep like, going with the Oscar nominations yeah. <laughs> and not try and uh, yeah. solve the Northern hey, Ireland conflict on yeah. the show hey, right now. Watch Belfast, folks. <laughs> there we go. Well, it's supposed to be very good. Um, yeah, yeah, I will yeah. say, it's, it looks... And Judy Dench is in it. I Judy mean, Dench is in it, yeah. Best actor in a supporting role, J.K. Simmons for Being the Ricardos, oh. which is um, a movie that I think... Apparently, actors really liked it because it got a couple of acting type nominations this year, okay. um, and nothing. And we else. like J.K. Simmons. We like J.K. Simmons. Simmons. Yeah. Why can't I Simmons. speak today? <laughs> Jesus, Cody Smith McPhee. It's all the Oscar buzz. It's it's yeah, affecting I'm, you. Just, I'm losing my mind here. <laughs> Cody Smith McPhee again for the power of the dog. Jesse Plemons again for the power of the dog. Uh, Troy Kotsor for Coda, and Ireland's own Kieran Hines for Belfast. Local man, <laughs> local man wins Oscar. <laughs> Let's go, Kieran. What a young, yeah. up and coming actor. The dog no, movie man. sounds like something I should watch. The which? The dog. Oh, the power the of the dog. Movie. Power um, of the dog. Yeah, yeah. It's it is. It seems it's, like very. Is it baity? Um, not a little bit. A little bit towards the end. It it's definitely a slow burn. Like it's quite. Um, our our friend, our friend of the show, Stuart, loved it. Um, yeah, because it's it's okay. it's re- it's very slow paced wise. Um, but there's a lot yeah. of interesting things in it. It's about a, it's Benedict Cumberbatch and Jesse Plemons oh. are brothers who are Benedict Cumberbatch. By the way, should just not do accents ever. I'm sorry. As, yeah, as good as Jenny, movies, just, just, just shouldn't. keep his accent. Yeah, just they're so accent. they're they're like ranchers. Um, you know, they're living that like secluded <laughs> ranch lifestyle. I can hear it yeah, already. It's, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> but they're living that like secluded ranch lifestyle type thing, and that they they come into town, and Jesse Plemons. The, so it's just the two of them. There's just two brothers, and they live in the, in this big house yeah. on the, on their own. And Jesse Plemons gets um, married to yeah. Kirsten Dunst, who already has a son, who's Cody Smith McPhee from a previous marriage, and he moves them in, moves her and the, the kid into the ranch, and yeah. there's all this like weird. Like Benedict Cumberbatch hates her, and there's all this weird tension going on and stuff. It's, you um, know, it's good, but it's not to bring it back to Marvel. But 
I am still shocked not more people talk about the atrocious accent he has for Doctor Strange. Oh, yes, yeah, like, I'm not from New York, right? Um, but, like, I feel New Yorkers must look at that. Oh, what the fuck well, is that? New, it's, just, it's just generic American. It's Tom know, Holland does it for Spider-Man. To do a New York, he's trying to do a bit of a New York. Mm-hmm, oh, yeah. Tom Holland is fucking class at his accent. Like, I really like Tom Holland's accent. Like, So, he, mind you... It does peek through once in a while. Oh, no, it, it's, it <laughs> slips on occasion. And yeah. he actually, I've seen him in interviews. Um, sometimes, like, he it's like American he, as well. he answers and he, and he stops yeah. and he goes, whoa, I just, that was not my accent. <laughs> what just happened? Yeah. So he's, yeah, that, yeah. he's that into it, like. Yeah, he's, um, he's quite good, like. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll try and get through the rest of these. Good Lord. Big ones, big ones, big ones. Big ones. Nice production design. International feature film, just to mention Flea, also nominated in there. So I think I'm going to have to watch Flea. Yeah, okay. it looks I, like it. I, yeah, think, yeah. I, think I think it's a Scandinavian animated thing about a guy. It's Denmark. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm going to have to watch that. Um, also nominated there. On the verge there. of marriage to his long-term there boyfriend, a successful academic in Denmark is confronted with a secret from his past. Oh, oh. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. There you go. Um, also nominated The Hand of God in Italy, which... Um, I, maybe I'm wrong. I think that's a football movie. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm yeah, just. That, maybe I think it is a Maradona. Yeah, is it the Maradona, Maradona movie? The hand of God. Or, or is it yeah. about Baggio? Or I'm going to be honest, somebody? man. For a second, I thought Maradona was Brazilian, and my well, brain... he's Argentinian, but he played in Italy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, which is why maybe. So I, that's probably be, why my brain yeah, yeah. mixed up. Okay, could be yeah, totally yeah. wrong. And then also the worst person in the world, which is uh, from Norway, it's supposed to be a great movie. Also. And then there is... I Lu- thought you meant Maradona for a second. I was like... What, the worst oh, person Jesus, in the I world. <laughs> Diego Maradona. I mean, I he wasn't like, always perfect, but Jesus. Yep. <laughs> Fuck that guy. No, he's a fucking... He's a cultural hero over here. Uh, Lunana, a yak in the classroom, which is from Bhutan. That... Oh. I, I don't think Bhutan, Bhutan gets a lot of Oscar nominations. Bhutan so that's, Woods. <laughs> yeah. Local Bhutan man wins Oscar. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> And then there is uh, Drive My Car from Japan, which I have on good authority is 97 hours long. No, it's not. It's apparently three hours long, and it's it's another one of those. Um, a lot of people you noticed would watch people it and say, it. nothing yeah. happens in this. There's no plot. Okay. Like, there's nothing happening. There's yeah. just a lad in a car. Like, that's what Have you noticed, like, people just lose their mind when the movie's, like, over two and a half hours? Uh, like are, yeah, oh unless my it's God, um, the biggest longest movie of all time. Yep. Oh, it's like oh, calm down. Nats. Yeah, man, I remember. I remember the the absolute end game. The, yeah, no, it was not end game. It was when The Irishman came out, and Netflix announced it was like three and a yeah. half hours long, and people actually made like infographics with plans of like here here are the optimal points to take a yeah. toilet break when you're watching The Irishman. Like every forty minutes, I was like, just you're an adult, sit down and watch the yeah. fucking movie. What is wrong with you people? Like. Jesus. Contro- controversial opinion. Did not care for the Irishman. I loved it, but yeah, but you know, you, know, you have terrible taste. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so best actress in a leading role, Jessica Chastain for *The Eyes of Tammy Faye*, which is a movie I actually quite want to see. Um, I think Andrew Garfield is also in it, and Tammy Faye was like a evangelical, you know, one of those like TV minister people in America. Yeah. I think she was one of those, um, and yeah. she she basically like sided during the AIDS epidemic in America. She sided with um, the LGBT community. Um, and started well, talking is that a lot the one? I who, think that's that one. Yeah. There's been. I two. think she's the one that acted like as a mother as well to um, gay men who were dying of AIDS or something like that. Wasn't yeah, it? I think that's Tammy Faye. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it looks like yeah. it could be an interesting movie. Um, so she's nominated for that, surprising a lot yeah. of people. Um, Because there's one name that didn't turn up in this category, but we'll go through the rest first. Olivia Coleman for The Lost Daughter as well. I mean, she's Olivia Coleman. She's a great actress. Penelope Cruz. She's actually one of my favorite actresses. Yeah, she's great. Penelope Cruz for Parallel Mothers, which um, I have been told recently is is, she's absolutely fantastic in it. And Parallel Mothers is um, an interesting watch. It's quite good, yeah. and then it kind of throws a spanner in the world towards the end. Nicole Kidman for again for being the Ricardos, which is weird because I the I had heard she was bad in that, but you know whatever. Um, and uh, Kristen Stewart for Spencer, so her role as Lady the, the Princess Diana um, in okay. Spencer. And the name everybody thought <laughs> might pop up here, Lady Gaga for House of Gucci is not there. Thanks be to Jesus. Okay. God bless her, um, but stay away from her. Yeah, here's a question. Um, 
uh, is was there's a movie coming on Disney Plus this month? Um, Pam Anderson and what's his face that she was dating? Oh, it's a time. it's a TV show. It's yeah. uh, Pam, oh, and, it? Pam and Tommy. Yeah. Okay, because I was about to say, is that going to come up in the Oscars? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's that's a TV show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's what's his face? Uh, the Winter Soldier guy is playing. Um, Tommy Lee. What's his name? Sebastian Stan. All right. He's he's yeah. the other guy, and Lily James. Uh, best actor in a leading role, um, Will Smith, for King Richard, which is the movie about Venus and Serena Williams. He plays their dad in it. Um, haven't seen that either. The trage oh sorry, Denzel Washington for the tragedy of Macbeth. Um, that's the okay. Coen Brothers version of Macbeth, I think, which looks visually looks really really interesting. Um, it's all like black and white and shit. Benedict Cumberbatch for The Power of the Dog. Yeah, you know, okay. accent notwithstanding, he's very good in it. Yeah. Uh, Javier Bardem also for being the Ricardos. So lots of acting nominations for being the Ricardos, not much else. And then my favorite, who I, God, I want him to win so badly, Andrew Garfield for Tick, Tick, Boom, which okay. is one of my favorite movies that came out last year. It was a real, I didn't expect it at all. I, it popped up on Netflix and I went, oh, Andrew Garfield's in it. And I stuck it on. He's brilliant in it and it's a really good movie. Yeah. Um, I will say, musical. I mean, I, I know it's the most mainstream opinion to have in the world, but ever since No Way Home, I've just been reminded how good he is as an actor. Yeah. He is he's a fantastic so actor. brilliant. Like, yeah. And he's he's yeah. great. I really hope. I don't know who's gonna. That category is crazy. I think Benedict Cumberbatch might win it, depending on how well The Power of the Dog does in all the other categories. But I'd love to see Andrew Garfield take that one home. Um, mm. Best director. So five noms here as well. Mister, um, a name that uh, maybe I don't know if you've heard of this guy, um, Steven Spielberg. No, is he up and coming? Yeah, I guess he's new. He's t- is this movie called West Side Story? Um, that uh, he, okay. That he's directed. I don't know what that is. Is that a Marvel movie? Is it? I guess it must be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Weird. Uh, Gene yeah. Campion for the Power of the Dog. I feel like I've said that. F- that the name. Okay, of that I think <laughs> I have to watch this movie I think, now. <laughs> I think I've said that the name of the movie so many times. I it doesn't sound like words anymore to me. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh God. I apologize again in advance. Ryosuke Hamaguchi for Drive My Car. Um, Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza. Now, I licorice had... Licorice or licorice? Li- whatever, either or. No, no, like one's sweets. a word, one's not. Lic- okay, licorice, yeah. Licorice Pizza. The, the Well, Americans call it licorice. I don't know, whatever. Well, they're wrong. Listen, I hadn't <laughs> planned on talking about this movie on the podcast, but I have to say something now. I have seen okay. this, okay? Yeah. It's, it's, uh... It's absolutely brilliant, aside from one thing, that I'm sorry, maybe I'm a Neanderthal, but I just can't get past the fact that the two leads in the movie, not just the actors, in it's a thing in the movie. This movie is a romance between a 25-year-old woman and a 15-year-old boy. Actually, yeah, no, a friend of mine um, was watching this, and she loves the movie. She thinks it's a really great movie. Yeah, I agree. Except yeah. that I ju- yeah. I can't get I just can't get past it. And they they mention it a couple of times in the movie. Like it starts off with he's like asking her out and shit, and she's like, "Oh no, so I'm I'm 25. I can't go out with you. We can be friends, yeah. but I can't go out with you." I'm sorry, no, you can't even be friends. You're not. You can't just be friends with a 15 year old when you're in your mid 20s. That's weird as well. And she's just hanging out with all his 14, 15 year old friends, and he's flirting with her, and she's like, "Oh, I can't. He's 15." And then she, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because it's annoyed me because I think other than that, it w- I loved it. It would be it okay. would have been my favorite movie that I've seen in a, in quite some time. Um, I just can't. I just I don't know. And people are like, I get it. All right, I get that people are like, well, just because it's in the movie doesn't mean the movie's saying it's a good thing. But like, the movie's not saying it's a bad thing either. Like it's a thing, and everyone's like, yeah, well, it was the 70s. Like, fucking things were different. It's like, no. They, like, fucking snowflake. What are you talking? Like, I'm sorry. Anyway, yeah, that's... I think what you said, oh, maybe I'm like a caveman. I'm like, no, I think you're the opposite of yeah, that. I, I think you... <laughs> like, I'm, <laughs> like, just, I'm sorry, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's I, a child. He's a child. He's a, he's yeah, a, he's yeah. a literal child, okay? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's 
wild because and it has some there's some like Bradley Cooper has a cameo in it that's just perfect. Like it's just the whole scene is brilliant, yeah. and you just wish the kid was eighteen. Well, in in all, because it doesn't add anything to the movie either. It's yeah. like why weren't they just both the same age, and then everything's fine and it's perfect. Well, isn't the pursuit of the older woman a part of it? Well, it, kind of. Like it's not like yeah. that's what people like they'll say, and I was like, well, yeah, that's the point. Like it's it's a toxic relationship and all this shit. And it's like that's no, not yeah. a to- it's not a toxic relationship. Okay. It's yeah. an illegal, <laughs> sinful it's not relationship. A relationship okay, even. It shouldn't it's, be a relationship. It's an illegal <laughs> crime. Yeah. Uh. But um, yeah, so that's Licorice Pizza. And then finally, uh, best director, Belfast for Kenneth Branagh. Okay, so I'm getting the vibe. I should watch the dog movie. You should watch Power of the Dog and Belfast. Uh, I kind of want to watch Licorice now, to be honest. You can watch uh, Licorice Pizza too. Into yeah, it I, no, no, I'd be interested to see how yeah. you what your reaction to it is because it's very yeah. it's either like you you see people seem to like I can I'm willing to ignore that and I yeah. love the movie or you're like me and I'm just kind of stuck on it and it's annoying here's a question otherwise... though here's a question though right and I'm not condoning it obviously but you being annoyed by it and you talking about it and you having a reaction to it isn't that the point of cinema as well yeah yes at times, but I don't think the movie is in is intended enhanced to, by this. No, I, I don't. Enhanced. Yeah, but I also I don't think the movie is intending to like open yeah. a conversation about like okay. the pros and cons of pedophilia. Like, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure that's what they were going for. Like, it's just I a don't little, like that you, you know said. I mean? Or I think we can just say the the, the cons. cons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because people are on the oh look whatever. Okay, let's do best picture because they did uh okay. they did ten of them this year. Way to go! I like when they do ten and they don't just randomly do. I'm eight looking for. Reason. I'm looking um, forward to us um, going. Like, yeah, and Moonfall uh, was kind of shite. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, best picture: <laughs> Belfast, Coda, Drive My Car, Dune, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, Nightmare Alley, which is the uh, Guillermo, G- sorry, Guillermo del Toro's uh, latest movie. With Bradley Cooper, uh, the power of the power of the dog, okay. again, and West Side Story, and finally, the the biggest shock to me that I genuinely cannot believe anybody liked this. Don't look up. Oh right, I thought you were going to say like you mentioned the movie and told me not to Google it. <laughs> Don't look up. No, no, sorry, no. The, mo- <laughs> the, the movie's called Don't oh, yeah. Look Up. Yeah, man, I hated man, it. Man, I, I like I know the movie Don't Look Up. As so many friends have said, it's a must watch. It's such Terrible. a sincere thing about it. No. But here's the thing. No, look, let me just let me sorry. finish. Yep. Let me finish. Um, everything this movie's shown me are things I'm aware society is already doing. And I don't want to watch it as an entertainment piece. And also, I'm not the biggest fan of Jonah Hill. And I don't think the movie looks any way good at all. I think it's just like edgy. I think it's like, what was that movie about where pe- people are going to become stupid in the future again? Idiocracy? It's, yeah, it, yeah. it gives me that vibe. It gives so me that it's, fucking it's, vibe. Don't look up, right? Uh, first of all, it's terribly written. Like the script is yeah. garbage, all right? But the the biggest thing is it's it's a movie that it Adam McKay and everybody who's in it, including Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, Jennifer Lawrence. DiCaprio definitely because he's all about like save the planet and fucking yeah. global warming and shit. They all definitely went into this thinking we're gonna change the world with this yeah. movie. Like Adam McKay has been tweeting about it nonstop, giving out about you anybody who didn't like it, basically saying, Well clearly you don't care about the planet and all this kind of shit like and like he, he genuinely thinks he's gonna fucking just he's gonna stop climate change yeah. because of this movie. And but yeah. the, like but it doesn't it tries to play it off at times like this satirical like it's like a family guy bit type thing where like uh, oh it's it's supposed to be like like the the government are reacting in a way like they play it that it's supposed to be completely like off the wall that like it's almost to the point where like Jesus <laughs> this would never happen but yeah. everything in the last ten years I think world governments have shown this is probably exactly what they do yeah right and it's got like the satire doesn't land because it feels 
it's, it's too, not satire. It's not satire anymore. It feels just yeah. like on the nose. Like, yeah, this is just what yeah. would happen. And that's why uh, I don't want to watch because it, it genuinely would fucking freak me out. Because I'm just... aware of how bad things are. Like this. Okay, this is an analogy on global warming, right? Let's not beat around the bush. Yeah, like, no, that's, that's exactly big, what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, also, I'll just make a point, right? Asteroids wise, like that should be also a thing that we should put more money in and keep an eye on the space and all that kind of stuff in general. Like it's Look, we all know, you know? You're, we all know you have a phobia. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. a very well <laughs> fucking phobia. We have a few extinction events on the fucking planet. <laughs> like, this is not a big fucking but you know what I mean? Like genuinely. Um but besides that, like I feel this movie and I know there's some people that listen to this podcast who are friends of mine who love this movie and it's not really directed at them because they're sound, but I get a vibe. This movie is just stuff for people who look, I'm obviously um, for stopping climate change. I'm against uh big government fucking things up hundred percent there. Right. But there are all these stupid, meany talking pieces which are just used to point fingers at the other side and say, ha, you're fucking stupid. Look, all you stupid people, you look like those stupid people. I don't give a shit about that anymore. We need to actually fucking do something. And this whole pointing and saying, ha, ha you're an idiot. Movies, like idiocracy and this, they're pointless. Yeah. All they're doing is adding to a fucking well, meme universe. See, like. that, the thing, like, don't look up, like, I wouldn't, it doesn't come across as preachy or anything right there's none of that in it where like there's not like a big thing at the end where a character basically looks down the lens and says yeah. we don't change you know there's not it's not that but it's i don't know who he's talking to like i don't yeah. know who who adam mckay and leonardo DiCaprio are talking it's to something, when it's they're something trying to acquire well that's the thing i don't know who they think exists that isn't aware that climate change is a problem like we, yeah. we know it's an issue like it's like we're and yeah. we're also aware that the way the government reacts in this movie, which is essentially to turn the asteroid into a for-profit business and decide to land the movie's version of either a combination of Elon Musk and Steve Jobs. Um, mm. They sell a contract to him that he can like basically mine the asteroid for precious metals to create more microchips or some fucking shit. Yeah, yeah that would happen. Like, that's exactly what would happen. That, that would yeah. be a thing. That's what the American government, that's what any government in the world would do. Yeah, and it's just like yeah, this is a point to be made as well. There's this constant thing about how the American government points, and no, it's don't get me wrong, the American government is shite. Yeah. But yeah, don't fucking fool yourselves, lads. It's all fucking shite. Like all, all governments at the moment are just fucking populist bullshit pieces. Yeah, right. Anyway, sorry. that's don't look up. I didn't mean shouldn't to get very. <laughs> shouldn't be nominated. I'm sorry. This again, is, look, this is our... maybe what, maybe I watch this movie and enjoy it, but everything I've seen so far of it makes no. me almost have an allergic reaction my, to it. My final point is that trying making a movie which basically says to everybody in the world, stop being an idiot and pay attention. Like, stop looking at your phones, blah, 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 all this kind of shit. Yeah. But the only way you could get people to pay attention to it is by stuffing it full of, like, A-list celebrity superstars and cameos yeah. and all this random bullshit. Isn't that... Awkward? It's, it's almost you know like I mean? it's joking it's, it's, itself. Yeah, you're, you're, you're like, like you are, you're the joke. Find this movie and make the money out of it. Same yeah. with the asteroids. <laughs> this movie is the asteroid. You're, you're the joke <laughs> at this point, like, Mr. Yeah. Mr. McKay. So those are the Oscar yeah. nominations. Um, yeah, I don't really care for any of them. I've no real. Do I hope Dune wins Best Picture, and I hope Andrew Garfield wins Best Actor. And other than that, I don't really care. Yeah, I will attempt, yeah. as I do every single year, to watch all watch of the all Best them. Picture nominations. Yeah. I, I I almost never make it, but I will attempt to. Um, I give them a go. I've seen less than I normally have at this point of this year's nominations, and there's also 10 of them now, so I'll probably fail miserably. Now, we spent enough time talking about the Oscars. Let's talk about the real shame of 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 this week and the fact that, oh, thank God this, week's, that. this week's movie was not nominated for an Oscar That's because it should have been. Okay? <laughs> no, no, we're not playing this, you're not playing this character where you fucking I'm defend an it. obviously bad no, movie. I'm doing it. This you know, I loved and, it. Oh, All right, we're no, doing. No, you didn't. You hated it. I, I know you it. did. We're doing Moonfall. Good... <laughs> Moonfall is a brand new release. Okay, so if you haven't seen it and you want to watch it, um, there will be spoilers. I'm not. You know, I don't. You know, I'm... I was five minutes late to the movie. I wish it was later. 
Well, that's why you didn't get it then, probably. <laughs> yeah. Moonfall is um, a movie uh, written, directed, and produced by a one Mr. Roland Emmerich, who who's great. It's fair to say we Roland, love. Yeah. All right, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Universal Soldier, Stargate, Independence Day, the 1998 Godzilla, which a lot of people don't like. Yeah. I quite like. I think it was maybe the, one of the well, first yeah. movies I saw in cinemas. Um, the Patriot. Come on. The Day After Tomorrow, which is a disaster movie that has no right to be as good as it actually is. Uh, 2012, which is a disaster movie that is not good. <laughs> Independence Day Resurgence, which is not good. Um, no. So he had a lot of, like, I, you know, a lot of... He likes uh, big, disastrous movies. You know, he likes big, And sometimes big they're disastrous movies. <laughs> hey. But he's an interesting filmmaker, yeah. I would say. You know, he does a lot of... He like, likes random... the bombastic... Yeah, but he does other shit too. Like, you know, he has some, um, like he did a movie in like about 10 years ago that was about, it was like a Shakespearean thing. Like it was, I think it was called Anonymous or something. And it was about like the Earl of Oxford in the 17th century and shit. Like, so it's not like he just does The Day After Tomorrow. He Like he does other shit. Um, he also did White House Down, which we've covered on the podcast um, in one of our splitting hairs episodes, so um, yeah, he I, he's fine. We like Roland Emmerich, okay. Uh, Moonfall yeah. stars Halle Berry, mm. who we haven't seen in anything in a while. To be fair to her, Patrick no. Wilson. Um, I don't know who. Do, what do we know him from? Fucking <laughs> Aquaman. <laughs> I Patrick Wilson to me is just it, it is not a reflection on the actor. I'm sure he's a very nice man, but every character. It, it, always seems to me like he's a bit in the characters he plays are seem to always be a bit incompetent douchey privileged white dudes who don't really get things and then fuck things up to be fair first half of this movie that's yeah. what this was yeah 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 uh <laughs> yeah. john bradley who is what's his face in game of thrones he was in watchman yeah i forgot what he was in watchman sorry um yeah um, what's his name in game of thrones sam what's his name sam, sam. Yeah, yeah the fucking yeah. the guy uh michael Pena, who I, he's in a lot of things, but you probably know him from Ant Man. Um, Charlie right. Plummer, <laughs> Charlie Plummer's the kid uh, who I know from Looking for Alaska. Um, uh, maybe nobody else knows him. Kelly Yu and Donald Sutherland, who is in the movie for one scene and then he shoots himself. Yeah, <laughs> I was expecting more. It's like when he came up, said, "Oh, yep, then, it's a yeah, it's, okay, it's, you're gone." It's okay, fucking yeah, it's that's what happens. Uh, this was technically they're classing this as an independent movie. Because none of the big studios were involved, I guess. Uh, except yeah, it was distributed by why. except it was distributed by Lionsgate, so I guess a big studio was involved. Um, and as I said, uh, yeah, it came out. It only came out like last week. Uh, so if you haven't seen it yet, there will be spoilers. Don't. We, we will be spoiling Moonfall. <laughs> if you haven't um, seen it yet, keep <clears throat> it up. Fair play, Steve. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not doing very well in the box office. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> but there it is. That's but it's Moonfall, and we're going to talk about it now. I'm going to play the thing, and then we're going to talk about it. Moonfall. I just want to say something quickly. I'm just looking for IMD page, and it has taglines, and the taglines in 2022, humanity will face the dark side of the moon. And I get that's metaphorical because literal, no, it's like, it's never the dark side of the moon. It's like the bright side of the, spoiler alert, inside of the moon. The inside of the humanity <laughs> will face the inside of the moon. There's also, oh, yeah. while we're on the topic of uh, the IMDb page, <laughs> there's, a, have you looked at the trivia? <laughs> one of the trivia things, there's only two entries at the moment. Um, the one is that uh, there's a scene in this movie where um, one of the characters is giving a talk to a bunch of kids and the wallpaper yeah. is the same as the wallpaper in the Overlook Hotel in The Shining. And a, the, the, according to this, that is a, a reference to the fact that the moon landing was faked by Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of yeah. that's the kind of thoughtfulness yeah. that's the kind of thoughtfulness yeah. that went into Moonfall okay they matched yeah, the striped wall. wallpaper oh <laughs> yeah well yeah, it must be a reference to Mr. Stanley Kubrick but Moonfall I guess we'll tell you guys this movie's rarely a reference to fucking filmmaking reference to everything we'll tell you what it's about I guess alright so basically uh, I mean, no we, we don't have to explain what it's about uh, the moon is falling 
the moon, yeah. So there's <laughs> the moon is falling to the earth, essentially. And um, there's a guy, there's a, an astronaut, Mr. Brian Harper, Patrick Wilson. Um, yeah. Where he's in space and the thing, like, destroys the fucking space, the, his space shuttle or the International yeah. Space Station or whatever. And he's like, it was a big alien and it buried itself in the moon. And NASA's like, no, it wasn't. And they fire him and he's, like, disgraced. And then it's 10 years later, apparently. And um, the the moon starts. The moon is out of orbit. Also, just to be clear, he would not have a dead end job, um, like because nowadays he'd just be going around doing conspiracy theories conventions. They would pay. Oh yeah, hundred percent. He's also like like astronaut is not like a specific. No, like astronauts are all like engineers and There's PhDs some, usually and like the engineers are pilots. Or had, like, yeah, like he's a pilot. The top like so, he's end of their careers. Yeah, yeah. he would have been a fucking it's airline super pilot. Super people. He would have been an airline pilot with a TikTok talking oh, about like moon yeah. conspiracy theories or something. Yeah, or he, he'd be like test flying fucking planes. Like he'd probably be. Oh like, my god, he like, would have been the, like, the best because he like he fucking flew a shuttle with only two thrusters and a three. He was able to land yeah, one. Yeah, they say like, that in the movie. He's fucking astounding. So he <laughs> would know? have actually like SpaceX or somebody would have hired him to like test yeah. rockets and shit. And I oh, think do you want to talk about I fe- SpaceX? I feel do you want to talk like about SpaceX? I feel like Elon Musk definitely sponsored this movie. All right. Oh, you think? I jo- <laughs> I have a feeling that it's that somewhere if we look through the money, if you follow the dollars, <laughs> you will be led to Elon Musk. Okay. Because I, there I, is I, not one. Honest, I don't think we even need to. I feel like we can probably just like ask him on Twitter and he's probably, like, yeah, yeah. fucking like, like, There is not one, but there is at least four direct yeah. references to Elon Musk and SpaceX as like godly things. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know. Yeah. Like, it, honestly, it's, it's like, I feel like it, it's been SpaceX, Elon Musk, and. Uh, the government of China, who sponsored oh, this yeah, movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're in everything <laughs> which, now. Which, yeah, like every like sci-fi movie in the last 10 years. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I have nothing against Chinese actors and that kind of stuff being part of it. Because let's be fair, um, like China has a presence in space now. They are part of that. So having them in sci-fi movies makes sense. But con- Continually putting them as the hero in the is is clearly a way to market it well across the world yeah. and sell in China very well. Yeah, because, 100%. Because, I mean, the one big thing about China is like, you know, they, one big push of theirs, or at least a thing that I present, is that they're all about science. Like, that's a big thing that they support and like to think of. Um, you'd think different if you paid attention to the Cultural Revolution, but, you know, never mind. I'm not, and I'm not going to China now, but anyway, never mind. We're um, really pushing <laughs> boundaries on this episode, yeah. aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, but oh, yeah, China was very much put into the limelight. And I have and a, they'll, say, they'll help us, and I, you know, obviously, how the main character was Chinese as well. Again, nothing against now, that. But, listen, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pull you up on that one. Yeah, because there's absolutely no shot in hell. I'm going to let you call Kelly Yu's babysitter a main character in this movie. She, <laughs> she has is, a, she has approximately four lines of dialogue. She's she's also a love interest. It's, she yeah, is, a little bit for Charlie. As much as her, she doesn't. As much as the do, son exists, she doesn't do anything though. <laughs> except at one point, she just says something in Chinese, and the mother goes, and, "Wow!" And she goes out to <laughs> help him. I think. Nope. She is a main character. She does. Nope. Yeah, yeah. I think nope. she does. Yeah. <laughs> no. <Nope. I> just... <laughs> She's. Uh, anyway, I heard a. Um, sorry, you've got me on the just so on the subject of China now. I heard a, a conspiracy theory recently that I have absolutely no evidence for whatsoever, but sounds plausible. Go on. So China owns TikTok, right? TikTok yeah. is a... Not yeah. ch- well, China doesn't own it, but it's a... It's well, a China Chinese, does, yeah, yeah. China owns... It's his communist nation, so... Yeah, yeah. Does so China own owns everything. TikTok. Um, yeah. So apparently, right, China uses TikTok to negatively influence American and European um, young people. And the way they do this is because... TikTok in China, the algorithm on TikTok in China rewards content that focuses on science and the arts and computing and things like that. So it pushes posts from young people who are like, you know, posting things about those kind of things. 
but the algorithm everywhere else rewards goofy dancing and like nonsense or music like trends. Like calling out people they want to fight in Dublin. Yeah, <laughs> and I just thought, I don't know even uh, does I is there any evidence for this? But it sounds right. Yeah, I mean it's a bit. Well, I mean, again, it, it could be just a company like you know saying, "Oh, this works good in China." Because, it, like I said, it's a thing they value in China, and entertainment I think is valued in the West a lot more than education at the moment. We're kind of in yeah, a yeah, yeah. dark but age the, when it comes to like science and arts. No, we are. Yeah, but to, the, but the yeah. point is that China is aware of this and they they keep it that way. I don't so know. I the, think it's. I think it's a marketing strategy. It might actually help them. Could after be a that, thing. I think it, I'm just saying. Yeah, it could it's be. Plausible. It could be. But I think the main thing is it sells better if we do this. <laughs> yeah. Know? No, I like my one better. Now back to Moonfall. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so basically that's the whole thing. There's a conspiracy theorist called Casey Hausman, which is a terrible name, by the way. Also, here um, can I just say, like, I'm okay with like funny conspiracy stuff, like, uh, you know. Like, oh, Nazis live on the dark side of the moon and that kind of stuff in movies. Like, that's all like, okay, that's stupid, but funny. Um, they, you, you can say, okay, it was a bit stupid that the, the moon was hollow, right? And there was stuff inside it. But they made it very clear, like, you know, your man just like going like, to NASA, everything you knew was wrong, and this guy's right, and NASA was stupid. It just, it really was like conspiracy. No, there's a, thick. there's a, there's a heavy thread in Moonfall that kind of ends up saying that conspiracy theorists are right. Yeah, and oh, NASA well, is lying to us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not so much saying that let's say conspiracy theories are always right, but that the like the people who are scientists are lying to us. Like, yeah. That's the focus. And that's what bothered me. It was just like conspiracies are true, big <laughs> fun. But the fact that they went, oh no, it's these are all lies. And like there was a little bit too much sincerity there. I was like, oh no, it was no. definitely a, like NASA have <laughs> NASA are lying to us and science yeah. is, is wrong and all these people are they're covering something up. Because they actually use heavy... real facts like oh when the Apollo left the moon it made a ringing sound. It actually did. Like that's the thing. But they didn't also explain what NASA's answer to that was. Uh, well that's you know, that's how that's yeah. how conspiracy theories work. Yeah. Isn't it? They use just yeah, yeah. just enough of the truth yeah. to make you go, hmm. Well, actually, and make you, you fill know, in the gaps. Yeah, you kind of go. Well, what he's, do you think? You know, he's Ooh. right. The moon did yeah. make a ringing noise. Maybe it is just a giant bell. Yeah, there's a logic yeah. in it. Is it. Here's the worst thing, right? So we'll just quickly talk about. It. Uh, do you mind if I just give the plot just there? Um, oh. Okay. Uh, the moon is an artificial satellite made by ancient humans uh, to find other places in the cosmos where they can make new plans for humanity to grow and live on. Uh, they're trying to hide from an AI which destroyed all their species except us who kind of were seeded on Earth. So the moon made the Earth in this. And like all of that, like I kind of enjoyed like the last 40 minutes of it, like when it went like really zany on the sci fi stuff. Like, oh, oh he, the, that the, was great. That, like, it <laughs> took me completely by, by surprise. I was so yeah. not prepared for this movie to basically turn around and be like, hey, Roland Emmerich. Is re is it's doing two thousand one a space odyssey now? Kind of, yeah. Like it was yeah, just yeah, yeah. the whole. I thought it was a cool twist. I thought it was, it was cool. Twist. like, oh, okay. The whole tone, everything just changed yeah. all of a sudden. It was just suddenly yeah, yeah. like, wait, what's happening? And there was all this yeah. weird like plot dump of like ancient humanity and all these shots of like a utopian yeah. planet and like all this shit. And I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> like it was. Oh, you so know what weird. I love? Oh, what I love. Um. I know we're kind of jumping ahead what the plot does, but I love at the very end they made like a hint that this is the start of this franchise. <laughs> you thought you were going to get a sequel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's just a, I think that's a prerequisite that like every movie now puts in. Yeah. Just in oh. case. Like what if it is sequ- like somehow it's a hit and we get a franchise out of this, but like, yeah. Yeah, so that's basically it. The moon has fallen to Earth, and these people are running around the place, and there's some yeah, there's Earth some is, astronauts. Um, and... The moon's mass is um, getting bigger. Um, it's using a gyroscope to 
have iron mass or something or move well this is the so it has it has a white dwarf star in this there's yeah. a white dwarf star it's, it's a dyson sphere it's a in, dyson sphere right? in the center of yeah. the moon that's like powering yeah, white dwarf yeah um so just to say i, I was once making like a D world which was going to be set inside like a dyson sphere kind of thing mm-hmm. and i did the math and with the suns and all that kind of stuff, it's impossible to do anything even Earth-sized Dyson sphere. No, I mean it's also even the smallest star doesn't work. Well, uh, <laughs> but uh, like a, a, the the mass of a white dwarf is also yeah. vastly greater than that of. Yeah, I think what they were trying to imply that they were able to control <laughs> the gravity of it. Is implied. You know? They basically just said it was a battery. Yeah, like it was just pa- it was thing. powering this the the yeah. mega structure. Yeah, it's like, which by yeah. the way I've never heard the word mega structure used more in my life. Oh, and every yeah. time they said it, mega I wanted structurist to or something, isn't it? Or I'm a mega structure <laughs> expert. Like, what? Yeah. What do you talk? What is a mega structure? What do you want about? Like, yeah, who yeah, are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. You've been. Yeah. He's one of these guys that sits at home and just watches the mystery of Oak Island on a loop. Yeah. Just goes. I figured it out. Like, my God. Yeah. Um, I love this movie though. Uh, have to no, say, you didn't. I really did. You didn't. I, I know you did. I, you, I, I know you fake it with a lot of movies, but I can hear it in your voice. No, you I don't did. have I, the spirit today. I, I be honest. I didn't hate it. I oh, genuinely I didn't hate it. Like I was, I walked out of this movie kind of like feeling like my brain was on fire. Like I, I, I left the cinema, and for a good twenty minutes, I just sat in my car, kind of laughing, and I was like, "What was that? Like, what did I just yeah. watch?" I had no idea how to to okay. get a handle on any of it. <laughs> I'm gonna be it was honest so with you. So unexpected. But I'll be honest um, with you, the Elon Musk thing I hated and the China that, thing yeah. and the conspiracy stuff literally ruined for me. And I'll also say, right, the idea of the moon falling into the earth, that could be a great disaster movie. That could be a really haunting thing. Like this thing that we've seen in the sky for all of our existence. You could argue that humanity is in literal love with the moon. We have written songs, poetry. It is part of our culture. Like we are genuinely in love with this celestial body. And for it to betray us, that could be like a haunting horror disaster movie. That sounds cool as fuck. But no, they didn't do that at all. Also, um, the effects were terrible. Yeah. The, it's in particular, in particular, the AI. the scene. The, no, the in, well, no, that was bad. But like, what stood out to me as particularly bad was the the initial. So when the moon is first like coming up close to Earth and all the fucking there's like tsunamis and shit happening. Oh all yeah, the place. yeah, yeah. My God, that looked bad. And also, <laughs> but the moon just, turned right over them as well. <laughs> but not not just bad, really ugly. Yeah. Like this movie is ugly. Is is my yeah. biggest t- gripe with the whole thing. It's not it's not at any time pleasant to look at. It's uh, it's it's too dark and they've got this really weird awkward color palette over the whole thing. It it looks I get what they're trying to do because they're trying to because the moon is like fucking massive in the sky and they're trying to go for like a, a whole moonlit yeah. type thing that like yeah, I get it, but it just—it's not pleasant to look at. It's not enjoyable in any way. Um, yeah, I just want to mention two things. Once, yeah, go on. No, no, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so one thing I want to first say: uh, when Casey Houseman, um, he's at NASA, and they—they they figured out that um, the moon was coming like closer and closer to Earth. And because it's going close to Earth, it also had shorter and shorter rotations. So instead of being like three months, it ended up being like three weeks, which is a fair thing, right? And then they're starting to wonder, like, what? What's happening though? Because it's coming faster to us. And Casey Hoffman, Houseman in NASA went, yeah, but did you count for the gravity increase and mean that it'll come even faster towards us? like, and they went, oh no, and he does the math, and I'm like, wait, hold hold the fucking phone. You mean the people at NASA never went, wait a second, the gravity is increasing, so it should... Ex-. Of course it would! <laughs> like, it's just... No, oh. no, NASA are oh. incompetent. Yeah. Also, as a said. little side thing, I think at the time when they got 
like the first astronauts went to that moon part and the liquidy AI thing came out and killed them. They made a point that the moon course corrected. Like they showed it like moving yeah, yeah. back out of orbit. And they never really mention it going back in. They just started, like I know what happened. Like the uh, AI moved away from the star, uh, and like the AI, the moon was able to course correct. And then once it killed the astronaut, it reversed it again to go back down. I get that. That's that's what happened. But it never gets mentioned. Like you never mention. Oh, it's coming closer again. It's, it's just like oh yeah, it's going to hit us like in a few hours. That's it. You you mean at the start of the movie? Or like at, at the start, you know, one says it starts coming closer, and then at one stage, they show it's like when the astronauts go up to see what's going on, look into the hole, oh, and yeah, the thing yeah. comes out and kills them. It shows a map of the moon going around and actually it moving away from the earth again, right? And then it never moves back, except yeah, it, yeah. It, and then they just say it's now coming back closer again, uh, like, but they never mentioned that it's back to the other course. I know why, but it, it doesn't get said, and I feel like this it probably should have. I feel like they had oh, a scene you mean they, they don't ex- they don't explain how the moon corrected its own course. No, no, they don't explain how the moon decided to actually. I'm going to go back and crash into the Earth again. Because like it showed that it was moving away from the orbit. Oh yeah, well, and, I think yeah. that's a, like because no, I the think thing went no, back. If, yeah, but they didn't mention that. They just started saying like, ah, it's going to crash into us in a few hours. They didn't say, oh, it's corrected itself again to go back to Earth. It never mentions that, and I feel like. The way they did that scene implies that there was another scene where they couldn't mention that, and they just cut it for time. Genuinely, it Maybe, just feels yeah. like that because I, I feel like it's obsolete. Like you, you don't need it. No, I saying, don't think it's that obsolete. Saying the moon is ne- oh, it's coming back. It's going to hit us again. That's the same yeah. as saying it's gone back to moving closer to us. No, but because it doesn't changing. say like no, because it doesn't say oh, it's gone back to us. It literally just saying it's going to hit us in a few hours. Yeah, there, is, is, there is a, no. I don't think it's the same thing. There's a bit of a jump. It's like, oh, it's moving away. It's going to hit us in a few hours. There is a little bit in between going, oh, okay. So it's coming back to us, okay? Yeah. But, I remember when it's. Yeah, sets. no, I know what you're saying. But saying yeah. it's going to hit us in a few hours, it's, in, it's inherent in that sentence that it's moving closer to us. Like, you, know, yeah, you don't we need a 10 minute but, scene. But, no, but no, I feel like we should have had an alert to say, oh, it's correct itself again. So we see the struggle between what's actually happening up in the moon and that we don't have to fabricate it afterwards when we actually find out what's going on on the moon it should be said like oh the moon suddenly is moving back again once that thing went inside because then we're like okay that thing's gone back inside it's controlling something i think um i think you found the one plot hole in moonfall that makes the whole thing fall apart that's it that's why if they had if they had left that scene in (laughs) here's the thing um they traveled 25 kilometers into it right and they couldn't go any further in right so, like, the, the, it, was, it was stopped them from the, the, the original drone. Does that mean there's about 25 kilometers of moon crust? And then it starts with the metal thing? You mean the, the probe they sent in? Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think it hit 25 kilometers and then the thing... The, yeah, the it, thing that was that's what I mean. Like, came up, yeah, came up. So, but, so, but I feel like the probe would have noticed, like, the surrounding part turned into metal. Rather than be still be like the crust of a. Speck. Oh yeah, maybe I. It was that yeah. was weird also because right after that is when they figure out that the the AI thing wasn't it wasn't a probe that it came up for. Yeah, it was going after the spaceship because it it only it hunts by bi- human biology inside electronics specifically. Yeah, you know what, you what got like, me what? when they went like that. That's us. That's humans. Why does the notes look fascinating? I mean, I'm sorry. Look, there's already a weird alien AI thing. I feel like other species would be the same. Like, yeah, I feel like if there's other species, they would have also be biological things surrounding electronic things. You know, <laughs> like this. I, is not I, a I also, I thing. also don't get how because they they explain in the like the the fucking exposition dump at the end that yeah. like all these this it's it's not like a bunch of ais it's one yeah. ai that every yeah. person on this like ancient human utopian planet used yeah. so isn't that like shouldn't it this one thing that's attacking the moon or whatever shouldn't isn't it connected to all the other ones that are out there don't yeah. all the other ones see what it's seeing and know what it, where it is and what it's doing and like yeah. there that's what the sequel is going to be Definitely. Oh, definitely. That's is. Yeah, definitely yeah, what yeah. the sequel yeah, was yeah, going yeah, to be. Yeah. Surely, I figured it out, haven't I? Yeah. 
damn it. You know, they, oh, they probably would have said, like, oh, there was another um, moon that got somewhere else and humanity survived from that planet too or some shit. Uh, they, I feel like, yeah, they would have skipped. Ancient humans would have returned somewhere. Yeah, they like would have been like, two. he would have been like, the next movie is set in like 2065 and we've used, yeah. we've harnessed the technology on the moon to like yeah. jump light years ahead into our own and future. Your and it's like an AI now that talks to everyone. Yeah, it's it's going to, I mean, yeah. it's going to be Hal, isn't it? <laughs> also, like, uh, his poor um, mother. Who's? Just left on Earth, not by herself. Oh, your mom Casey with dementia? Hausman. Yeah, that, that got me. It was like, she has an American accent, but he has an English accent, but they're living in America. Yeah. I mean, I know they explained it, like, that they moved over to, but I feel like they just couldn't find an English actress. <laughs> I guess not. I'd, well, see, I think I feel like they wrote that in after because I was reading as well that Josh Gad was in, originally cast in that as the role of Casey Houseman, which definitely would have made the movie way worse. Yeah, because he's awful. Um, not yeah. that you look. I mean, uh, John Bradley is also terrible, but Josh Gad is a <laughs> yeah. different brand of just awful. Um, yeah. God, yeah, Moonfall, loved it, loved it. I love that you actually didn't, and you're just trying to play the character, but Fucking it's just it. not there. No. I was in, no, I was in. I was sold. I was ready to go to war. And the more we started talking about the movie, the more I just kind of went. Yeah. Actually, here's I the can't. thing, though. Like, like I don't even mind the science in this. I, I, I forgive that completely. It's, it's not a big deal for me because this moon, this movie is all about science. Let's be fucking real about it. It's just all the attitudes in it. If I had to give out about one thing about the science, just one thing, um, just one, they get, I know the moon is closer, but they get to the, like the, the they get to the moon really, really fast. Yep. Um, <laughs> like super fast. And not oh, yeah. even at the end. I mean, like when the initial astronauts are sent, it's like oh, yeah. a couple hours. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. there. <laughs> yep. And it's like, and they, they not even using like any advanced ships, just, a normal ship. They, they, fly, they, <laughs> they fly to the moon for the final mission on the fucking Endeavor. <laughs> like yeah, they go yeah. to an act, they go to a museum and steal. That always happens in these movies. The so Endeavor. Like they take someone out to the museum. Yeah. Like, and then they like who did it? They shepherd it down the street like it was done. Like when they moved yeah. the Endeavor to the museum. Yeah, um, and it was a big thing. <laughs> There's just two random guys looting a gas station, and the army yeah. just is like just plows through them <laughs> it's like fucking hell yeah there's yeah. this whole weird thing as well in the background the the US military are planning to nuke the moon to yeah. get to I don't know I guess they're just like we'll just blow it up and it'll be fine well no um, I, I assume it's because of EMPs because that's what nuclear weapons can do but because they already they already made a weapon and they were oh, aware had, of this weapon oh no, no no they had yeah. so the weapon they made was an EMP yeah yeah but what I'm saying is like nuclear weapons to EMPs as well. But that, that's probably no, why they no, said that's them. not why the military they they were just their plan was to just blow it up. No, I, just I, maybe I was giving it too missile. much credence. But you're giving it way too person. much because that would make no sense if the US <laughs> no, military. It would, sense. it would make sense. In no, real it would. Life. It wouldn't in terms of everything in real life. Sure, it wouldn't make terms and sense of everything else happening in the movie. Because if yeah, the yeah. if the military's plan was to just shoot a bunch of EMPs on to the moon and do that then why yeah. did the rest of them need to be like you need to delay the missile launch because we have an EMP and we're going to fly it to the moon and set it off yeah <laughs> like, your man was like well yeah. no the, 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 we're, the missiles have EMPs on them they're just going to do no, that no like, I, I think it's because <laughs> they didn't have any ships left and that was the linchpin it's like oh we're going to bring the Endeavour out but that's crazy but just might be crazy enough that I think that's it no it is it's meant to be like this whole thing like oh uh, fuck the government and but and you know, fuck most of NASA, especially that one guy who was in charge. But like the people who work at NASA, they're okay, I guess. They're a bit stupid, but they're okay because that's that's basically what they were going for. Like, you know, mm. uh, good times. Halle Berry's no. really bad in this. Oh, she is, yeah. Uh, but Halle Berry's uh, bad in most things. Oh, oh. damn, son. <laughs> She's an Oscar winning actress, Daniel. Yeah, I mean, I don't really think highly of the Oscars, to be honest, man. <laughs> She's not. She's good and she's okay in some things. Um, she's really, <laughs> she's, she's really bad. <laughs> she's really bad in this. So, yeah, um, yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, Charlie Plummer, um, who plays the kid. I, I. So I know him from a, a TV show called Looking for Alaska, and he's really fucking good in it. He's not good in this. He's so miscast in this. 
he it it, it everything about this kid is just not Charlie Plummer. He, like yeah. he's supposed to be this fucking like misguided rebellious. He going, reminds going me of prison. Independence. You know the kid in Independence Day who like lived in a trailer of his family. Yeah. Like he reminds me of him. Like the character wise. Yeah. They're kind of these aimless kids who kind of want to do their own thing. Yeah, but it, that's just not Charlie Plummer. Like the yeah. the actor, even visually, he's just he's this fucking little scrawny. Like he should have been like a super nerd who was like mad into NASA and shit, like the other yeah. kid, the other kid was. It's just fucking. Yeah. Weird. And they could have easily they could have easily done that as well. Where they just like instead of him like getting in trouble for like stealing a car, I don't know. He fucking hacks into something, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh. Honestly, it was just a bad, like bad casting. Um, like not a terrible premise. Like, cause I, like I said, I enjoyed the last forty minutes, but I feel like maybe we could have got there faster. Um, oh, you definitely could have got there faster. Yeah. Okay, I think. Um, considering, I don't think we're gonna do a Jesus moment on this episode. Are we? This the movie's yeah, a Jesus. The whole moment. thing is just a Jesus. Elon moment. Musk. Elon Musk it's is the, the Jesus. It's the mo- yeah, I was gonna pick the Musk yeah. thing as well because it's the, from yeah. the very first time Casey Houseman says his name, I immediately yeah. went, "Oh no!" Because that man, yeah. I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna say it loud for anybody listening. Elon Musk is a fraud. All right. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Let's also, do also just just the, uh, and I mean I'm surprised that Moonfall isn't selling NFTs yet. They will soon. Uh, yeah. Let's do final thoughts then. Yes, Mr. Frodo, it's over now. Okay, Dan, sum it up for me. Uh, my before thoughts before we did this review uh, and while we talked about the Oscars was very clearly that I hated Moonfall uh, my thoughts throughout this was that I hated Moonfall and I hate Moonfall in review I think it's a really bad movie I think it's pandering to a weird group of people that shouldn't be acknowledged um, I think it's a really it's a shame um that a concept like this was thrown to such a shit miscasting um i want to talk to roland emmerich and say dude what's is there something going on at home are you okay like because this was it was just a bad disaster movie. So I like, and Kazi would say this like I love cheesy bad disaster movies, but this was like not even entertaining, good cheesy and um, disaster movies. Mm. It was just a just bad on many many levels. Yeah, I think, um, I think that this movie never really quite decided what it wanted to be. At any point, like there's 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 large elements of like your typical day after tomorrow, like end of the world type yeah. disaster stuff, and then there's a bunch of just weird action comedy type shit happening in it. Yeah. Then there's this Here's whole the like conspiracy theorist drama going on in the background, and all this like kind of espionage stuff happening. And then yeah. there's this there's a whole just like completely out of nowhere. Stanley Kubrick 2001 style like weird ending happening and then yeah. it goes back to the other thing and it it's because of that it's not good it doesn't do any of them particularly well no. if they, if this was just a disaster movie where the moon is hitting the planet and there's a bunch of weird shit happening then probably it's fine yeah but it's it's yeah. all this other shit too and it's just none of it's very good here's the thing right i uh, so i'm comparing all this movie to independence day for like dab yeah, plenty like connections there i think it's fair to say but what i'm thinking now what made independence day good and what made it good was that it's very cheesy and the characters ooze charisma like genuinely like that's the uh, arguably the best part of independence day are the characters in it like it oozes personality and charisma and they clearly love being there. There is not a single actor or character in this movie that I felt 
cared about this, enjoyed their time on set, like that I was rooting for, nothing. Absolutely zero. Like it has no personality or like charisma to it whatsoever. No, none. And it's ugly as well. Actually, yeah. I, w- I would love to know what... So Independence Day was what? Like, when did Independence Day come out? 2019. 19, oh. 1996, Nin- okay. 96, yeah. So I would love to know how how does Roland Emmerich, like what happened in the last 20 odd years or even the last 10 to make a director go from Independence Day, The Patriot, The Day After Tomorrow, which are, are all, I guess, movies about like, they, like they all have, there's scenes in them that have, well, The Patriot's The Patriot. Like there is a patriotism to them. And if, if, yeah, if yeah. Roland Emmerich had made Moonfall 10, 15 years ago, there would have been a scene it would have been a president's speech scene, like in Independence Day. Yeah, it would have been his movies. All like they all had that core of like you know America. We're gonna like save the yeah, world. Yeah, like, yeah. The, like and NASA would have been American. I still love that. No, shit. but that's but like <laughs> yeah. Fifteen years ago, Roland Emmerich makes this movie. NASA are the heroes. Yeah, like NASA like saved the day. Okay, so maybe there's other people like the government are trying to like keep a lid on the fact that there's something going on on the moon but NASA are like the truth yeah, tellers yeah. and they're the, the scientists and they're going to yeah. save it and there's a big speech where we go bravely and we do not give up the fight and all this yeah. kind of shit like they'll leak something to the population yeah, you know, we're going to do thing. this and, and yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. and this movie is the complete opposite this movie yeah. is basically like no NASA are lying to us science is wrong conspiracy theories are real everything is shit and at the end of the day you just got to look out for yourself and it's like I don't I don't know where that like I'd love to know what happened. Like, what changed Roland Emmerich's opinion on these things? Culture, I think. Getting yeah, older in guess, culture in yeah, general. Probably, but it's, it's, a, it's an interesting... If somebody out there who writes for some sort of film magazine wants to put that piece together and in, do, in an interview with Roland Emmerich, you can have it. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Ask him the questions. Yeah. God. There's Moonfall. Um, what yeah. are we doing next? Do you want me to tell you? Yeah, yeah, just, just you know, I'm, I'm always saying it, so, you know, you might as well yeah, take yeah. over here. We're doing another new movie that's probably going to be absolutely terrible. We're doing Uncharted. We are doing Next. Uncharted with Tom yeah. Holland. Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg. It looks, I'm going to, I'm just going to say it right now, maybe spoiling the next episode, it looks terrible. I think it looks awful. It does. It doesn't look in any yeah. way interesting, and it doesn't look like the right tone for an Uncharted movie. Um, but it'll be can't fun. Wait to, we get can't to... wait till I can pretend I loved it. <laughs> yeah, you can go for it. <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck, it was great, man. Woo-hoo, Best movie of the year. Best movie of the year. <laughs> That's what we're doing uh, in two weeks. We'll be back for Uncharted. Um, as always, yeah. thanks to everybody for listening. Uh, we'll, yeah. go, we'll put this out in the usual places. Uh, drop us a wee little like or a comment or whatever. Let us know if you've seen Moonfall, what you think of it. Let us know what you think, if you think Uncharted is Tell us if you're wrong. Good. Tell us if you're wrong. Tell us um, what Oscar movies you th- think should win. Tell us, um, just tell us stuff, I guess, you know. <laughs> just talk to us, please. Yeah, please. Anyway, we will. We love comments more than anything. Anyway, we will see you in uh, two weeks. Farewell. Yeah. Bye-bye. Love you long time. Asher Lowe.